Studio 33 AD, bringing you Catholic Media. Hi, I'm Noni McWhorter, and um, I am now the president of St. Vincent de Paul St. John's Conference. And um, I'd like to talk to you today a little bit about our history. Um, our patron was St. Vincent de Paul, who lived in France in the 1500s. Uh, he was ordained at 19. He was a priest in a private chateau in um, the countryside of, of around Paris and tutored young men. He mainly did this because he needed um, support for his family. That's what um, a lot of priests did at that time. They were like the second or third child in a family and they needed, uh, they needed uh, money for their family. Um, he was out and about on the chateau one day and he found a dying peasant that had um, needs of the sacraments and he didn't realize that all these peasants on this chateau had no way of receiving the sacraments. And uh, so it moved him so much that he quit and became a parish priest. In this parish that he was in, they, they were very poor and he, they lacked organization. And St. Vincent de Paul was an organizer. That was his uh, gift from God. And he organized uh, soup kitchens, uh, uh, the people to take food to the sick, um, things like that. And the way he organized was so much, it was so different that um, you could easily see that things were going to change. He started a group of priests. He started with uh, St. Louise de Merillac, who was the founder of the Daughters of Charity and um, several other organizations, Vincentian organizations. Um, St. Louise de Merillac was the first daughter of charity, and what she did was she had women uh, that did not have any way of making money, and she organized them into small groups of sewing and had them um, so and and um, have their sewing um, bought by other people in the country, and so they earned enough money to support themselves, and they lived in decent boarding houses. So Saint Vincent de Paul was the greatest um, French saint, and before him there were no way, no hospitals, and no way. To help the poor, but he started it all. I'd also like to talk to you a little bit about our founder, who is Frederick Ozanam. Frederick was a, a, a college in 1833. He was at the Sorbonne, and um, his his father had been a physician in Italy with Napoleon's army, and that poor in that country they had as a family had started ministering to the poor and taking um, food to the poor. So he was, he was familiar with that ministry. After the revolution, the French Revolution, there was a lot of anti-Catholic feelings in France. And they were charged with, what are you doing for the poor? So these six college students who were in a seminar that um, was taught by a local Catholic newspaper uh, publisher decided that they would go to the poor. So what they did is they contacted a daughter of charity, Blessed Fred, uh, Rosalie Rondeau, who worked on the streets of Paris on the left bank helping the poor. She lived in a small house and she would go out every day kind of like Mother Teresa, and help the poor and uh, give them food and give them comfort and give them spiritual spiritual um, uh, 
readings. Uh, she uh, counseled the six students to go to the poor. These were sons of rich people. They didn't know how to talk to the poor. At that time, um, uh, the rich and the poor didn't talk. <laughs> and they started taking bread. They first started taking bread to the slums of Paris. And um, she showed them how that uh, how to approach them, how to talk to them, how to uh, listen, and um, so this this was good. This was the start of the Industrial Revolution, so there are a lot of poor in Paris, and um, this ministry started um, very fast. To, to grow and it went all over Europe in about five years because the, the the students took them back to their home countries and everybody liked the way it was doing and uh, so they took them back to their home countries. It started in the United States in about 1860 in St. Louis. Okay, There's about a million and a half volunteers across the country across the world. And um, in Australia, they have a large group of at least 30, 35,000 teenagers, which has a ministry of going to other teenagers in Australia. So there's, there's all kinds of um, volunteer um, organizations in our um, St. Vincent de Paul. We have 11 councils conferences here, one council, Southwest Idaho. Our, our, our spiritual growth is the most important thing that we have in our conference. There are, uh, the conferences are, are varied. Most of them, most Catholic churches here in the Valley have a St. Vincent de Paul, but not all of them. Uh, there are conferences at the State Street store who employ marginalized people uh, at not all, but some, and they are a spiritually um, connected uh, to each other, and they help the people at the State Street store. We have a large re-entry conference here in the Valley that um, helps people that are coming out of prison, and we've seen um, enormous growth in that, and the recidivism rate of people going back to prison has has really gone down. So, um, anyway, lots of people, lots of people helping people. That's what we do. So I'm Bobby Dominic, and um, I am the vice president of the conference. Thank you very much, Noni. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> I. Um, as many of you know, I have been in ministry for a long, long time, and I've always been a student of Catholic theology, Catholic teaching. I have a master's degree. About three or four years ago, I started studying in-depth Catholic social teaching um, and got a certificate from the University of Dayton in that. And the reason I did that was because my husband, Deacon Tom Dominic, has been involved in St. Vincent de Paul for about 10 years. Um, and been a home visitor for parts of that time. And I watched him and I heard him preach about um, Catholic social teaching without really realizing the connection that it had to how we live our Catholic faith. Um, and Catholic social teaching is so rich and there's so much of it, but there are seven pillars of Catholic social teaching. And life and dignity of the human person, which many people have heard about, is one of the pillars the option for the poor is also one of the pillars. And I grew up poor, and I've always studied saints like Mother Teresa and St. Vincent de Paul that helped the poor, and I was always drawn to that. And so it was Catholic social teaching that really helped me connect that. So the option for the poor means that the poor, all humans are entitled to dignity. And what does that dignity mean? That means they have a place to lay their head. That means they have food. That means they have... Um, heat if it's cold outside. That means they have a blanket if they need a blanket. 
So human dignity is a principle that's encompassed in everything we believe as Catholics. Matthew 25, the Last Judgment, is one of the real bedrocks of Catholic social teaching, which says, if you saw me poor, what did you do for me? And so because I've always been drawn to that and I've been studying it, I really wanted to get more involved in Catholic um, social ministry of some sort. And St. Vincent de Paul is the perfect place to do that because it helps us to live out that call that Jesus gave us for the last judgment of how we will be judged. We will be judged by what we did for the poor. And the interesting thing about home visits, you can give money to organizations that help the poor, and money is always a great thing to give. (laughs) Um, But if you go out and you actually meet the poor, you grow, like Mother Teresa said, you grow in compassion, you grow in humility there, but for the grace of God go Mm -hmm. I. You grow in um, kindness and gentleness. And so that's really what the home visit does and how it incorporates Catholic social teaching. So I'm gonna turn it over to Noni so she can talk about some examples of home visits and what we do on home visits. Okay, uh, as, as you know, or I'm sure you know that uh, confidentiality is a, is a big part of what we do because we go out and we uh, meet people in their homes or at coffee houses or uh, at hospitals, you know. Uh, but uh, the example I'm going to give you is one that I had asked this person, I'm not going to give you their names or anything, but if I could use this example. Okay, this was a young woman, and I think she was a bookkeeper, and she was from South America. This was a couple of years ago. She was married to an American, she had an American husband who got in trouble with drugs and was in prison. This is when she called Saint, our helpline. We get calls on a helpline every day, and then we go out after that. Uh, her family had disowned her from South America, uh, and she was due to give birth in, say, a, a month. She wasn't really sure what she was going to do. She had a good job, this bookkeeping job, so she had some money, but she didn't have a place to live. And she had no way of, of, of um, paying for that. So um, she had found an apartment and it was furnished in reasonable rent and she needed about three months, she thought. And then she could go back to work after she arranged for childcare. Um, well, it was about $1,500. You know, this was a couple of years ago. <laughs> it's probably <laughs> doubled or tripled that now, uh, which was a little out of our price range that we can help with. So what I did was I made an application to the Morrison Foundation, which can help once uh, with a little bit more money. So they and she, uh, so I saw this gal and she, uh, we filled out all the forms and we submitted it and she did get the, um, the grant. So what we helped with was food, clothes, baby clothes, cribs, um, but, but more than that, we talked a lot about how she should approach her family, about her husband and her situation here. And um, because she said her husband was a good guy and really had just, had just fallen on bad times and, and that her parents, she loved her parents and uh, she was pretty distraught. Here she was going to have a baby in a, in a new country and, uh, but she had a lot of guts too. So anyway, fast forward. So about a year after that, I decided this might be a good uh, um, thing to t- talk to people about when I talk about home visits. So I called her house and um, was going to ask for permission to use this uh, um, tale here. 
And a man answered the phone, and I said, this is Noni from St. Vincent de Paul, and I heard this kind of scream, and I said, what's wrong? And he said, you're the lady that helped us. And I said, okay. <laughs> anyway, it was her husband. He's out of jail. He's working. Her parents are here in Boise. They have reconciled. She's back at work, and the baby is a year old. So I just want to make sure that everybody knows that we want to continue to create these kind of stories, the stories where we go out and we meet with people, and we really touch their lives. And so one of the mottos of St. Vincent de Paul ministry, um, the three values that we treasure are spirituality, um, and friendship. friendship, and service. So at each of our meetings, we talk about spirituality. We have a spiritual reflection at each of our meetings to make sure that we're in touch with that spirituality of Catholic social teaching. And then we become friends, and we work together as friends, and then we go out and we serve the poor. So those three uh, values that we have are really the kinds of things that we hope draw people to us. Because if you really want to be involved in deepening your spirituality and in some kind of service, St. Vincent de Paul is the best way to do that. Um, and so Noni can give you some ideas about how you can help. Okay, our main um, need right now is for volunteers. We um, are, have been taxed to the limit uh, with requests just because of our economy and um, we need um, people to come and, and join with us to go out to the poor. We will train you, we will go with you, we will not uh, let you have to do this by yourself. That's our friendship part. So um, my email is in the bulletin. Um, my phone number is 208-890-8202. So call me. Uh, we will welcome you to join us. Um, but we need to be out there and we need more people to help us. So we would like to close in prayer. We thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to this. And we thank you for whatever contribution you feel called to give. And we're going to close with the closing prayer that we use at a lot of our meetings. Um, and we include these elements in all of our prayers. So you can have an example of this. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Frederick Ozanam. Pray for us. Jesus, show us how to make the poor feel at home with us. Give, give us eyes to see you in the broken and in the poor. Jesus, give us the spirit of humility. Make us true believers of Vincent and Frederick. For all those who are poor and destitute. May we bring them the Good Shepherd's protection. We thank, thank you, you, Lord, for, for the, the many, many blessings, blessings which we receive from those whom we visit. Help, Help us to love and respect them. them to understand their deeper needs, and, and to, to share, share their, their burdens and joys as true friends in Christ. That our departed friends and relatives, our Vincentian brothers and sisters, and those whom we have visited be welcomed into your kingdom and joined in love. Lord, hear us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.